Hi there, in this video, we're going to learn SFC programming language. SFC is defined as an abbreviation for sequential function chart. It can be used to program industrial processes, that can be split into some simple steps. In this video, first, I'll show you the main components of SFC, which are steps with associated actions, transitions with associated logic conditions, and finally, directed links between steps and transitions. Then, I'll test an SFC program to fill and discharge the water tank system, which was explained during previous videos. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start the video. Well, my PLC supports two languages to write its program. Until now, we've been using the ladder diagram. In this video, we're going to learn how the SFC language, sequential function chart, can be used by ISP Soft. This language is a graphical programming language, that displays the process flow as a diagram, thereby allowing the user to control the sequential processes, by describing the actions, and transition conditions, for each step. As you see, these icons can be used to create different types of sequential charts, appropriate for different types of industrial processes and conditions. Well, for the first program, let's create a simple sequential chart with four steps. Well, here are four steps. First, let's specify the address or name for each step. Usually, try to use a meaningful symbol for each step, and then, assign an address for that, inside the local symbol table. Each step address must be started with the letter S and then a number, like S0, S1, or S10. Remember, as I mentioned during previous videos, if I don't specify any address in the address column, PLC will automatically select an appropriate address, when I use the compile icon, before downloading my program. Let's continue and determine the next two steps name. Now, let's see how actions can be created. Inside each action, we can write a program that determines what the PLC should do. Note that, on the left side, under the program's item, we can see all created actions, and also create new actions. The program has four steps. So, let's have four actions too. Now, let's connect the created actions to these four steps. Note that, a step can do more than one action, but for this simple program, let's use one action for each step. Alright. These actions have been connected to these four steps. Now, I'm going to write a simple program inside each action, that determine what my PLC should do at each step. Well, I don't want to do anything at the first step. So, let's go to the next action, which is connected to the second step. 
inside the second action, I'm going to use the timer instruction, to turn on my second output for 10 seconds. Now, let me copy this simple program, and use that inside the third action. I want the third action to turn on my third output for 5 seconds. Finally, Let's use the last action which is connected to the last step, to turn on the fourth output. Well, except for the first action, I've written a simple program inside the next three actions, to turn on these three LEDs. Now, let's create a transition. Transitions can be added between two steps and include conditions, that determine when my PLC must exit from the current step, and go to the next one. Let's open the created transition. As you see, the transition coil is located on the right side. We must write the transition condition on the left side. By default, the transition coil is activated, and I don't want to add any condition to this transition. Therefore, based my PLC will exit from the first step immediately. Note that, like actions, on the left side, we can see created transitions, or create new transitions too. Ok, I will use the second transition here. Between the second and third step. So, it determines when my PLC should leave the second step, and go to the third step to run this action. Alright, based on the program inside the second action, let me use the T0 timer contact. So, after 10 seconds, my PLC will exit from the second step, and go to the third action. Similarly, I will use the third transition after the third step. Now, let me use the T1 timer contact. Therefore, after 5 seconds, my PLC will exit from the third step. Finally, let me use a digital input address, to activate the last transition. Now, let me use the created transitions between the steps. Finally let me determine where my PLC should go, after the last step. Let me select step 1. Now, an error. If you remember, I've not written any code inside the first action, and this message tells me, I cannot use an empty action. So, let me delete it from my program. Note that, the first action has been deleted from my program, but I have it inside my project. Again, let me compile the program, to ensure there isn't any error. Alright, here is only one warning, that says action 0 is never used. Let's continue. Here is an SFC program with 4 steps. Now, I need to determine the starting step. Note that, each step has an individual address. 
Let me call the first step address, S0, inside the main cyclic program. Well, based on this program, if my PLC goes to running mode, step 0 inside the SFC flowchart, will be executed once time, and after that, it will go to the next step and the SFC program will start its work. Now, let me compile, and transfer my program to my PLC. Alright, the program has been transferred successfully. Based on this program, when I run my PLC, the first step will be executed during the first scan time. Let me open the SFC program. Remember, the first step doesn't have any action, and its transition condition is activated. So, the PLC will go to the second step, when I run my PLC. Well, Based on this action program, at the second step, the second LED remains on for 10 seconds, then its transition condition will be enabled and PLC will go to the third step. Similarly, based on the third transition program, PLC has exited from the third step and enabled the fourth step. Remember, the last transition can be enabled by this digital input. Let me press it. As you see, PLC has gone to step 1 and the previous sequential chart will be repeated again. Alright, let's test another SFC program with factory I.O. software. As you see, here are two programs. The main cyclic program, and this SFC program. Note that, the cyclic program calls the first step of the SFC program, and also calculates the water level of this tank system, which was explained during previous videos. Well, the SFC program is similar to the previous one. The first step does not have any action. And also its transition is activated. So, PLC will go to the next step quickly. The next step will open the filling valve, until the water level is less than 250 cm. After that, inside the next step, PLC will close the filling valve, and turn on my first LED for 10 seconds. As you know, each step has an individual program and can be modified. For example, the timer time can be increased, or turn on another device like a mixer. After 10 seconds, PLC will open the discharging valve, until the water level drops to 50 centimeters. Then, PLC will close the discharging valve, and go to the first step. Remember, based on the cyclic program, the first step is controlled by this digital input. So, to start the filling and discharging process again, I will need to press this push button again. Ok, like previous videos, let me download my program, and use OPC server to connect my PLC to factory I.O. software.
All right, my PLC has connected to this water tank through the OPC server. Now, let me press the first push button to start the filling and discharging process. Note that there is a little delay between the PLC commands and the equipment response because of using the OPC server. Well, based on the SFC program, the filling step will be continued until the water level reaches 250 centimeters. Now, the first LED is on for 10 seconds, and then the discharge process will start. Well, my PLC has finished the first filling and discharging process. To start it again, I must press this push button. Now it's your turn to do more projects, to learn the SFC programming language. In the next video, I want to use an HMI beside my PLC, during a simple project. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.